All right, guys, it's Tian. I'm back, man, with another video on guess who? Our favorite, one of our favorite YouTuber uh, slaves, <laughs> fitness slaves, or uh, influencers is uh, Alex Leonidas, Alpha Destiny. Yes, man. He's getting road to shredded. Road to shredded. Alex Leonidas says, uh, 200 pound chain chin up workout, shred day eight. Yes, man. He's getting shredded, man. All right, let's review this video. Road to Shredded, day eight. We're starting with weighted chin ups with chains, a useful variation for overcoming the natural top sticking point. Unlike weight up chin ups, weighted chin ups with chains. I, I, I can hear the chains going up and down. So, okay, so he has some weights with the chains. So, what happens is it gets heavier on the up force, but lighter on the down force. Don't you want it? heavier on the down force because that's the eccentric movement that's where you get the muscle damage what's the point with the up force the up force doesn't damage muscle fibers to get them bigger and stronger like the big three which is limited by your bottom strength here it is entirely possible to fail in getting your chin over the bar this is because of this is great for maybe for an adaptation in force production on the up force on that up force against gravity that is really great. It's going to fatigue the shit out of you, make you tired and everything. Well, it's going to make you better at doing these. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But there isn't going to be any, any growth there. Free weight gravity. And this applies to most back movements, except for T-bar ropes. So chin-ups are not lengthened bias. But this here's is a question. If he's on the road to shredded, why is he doing all this heavy weight lifting? He says shredding. Right? So he's on a low caloric diet, shredding, right? Isn't that what these, these fake bodybuilder people do? They go these low caloric diets, try to shred down, and they lose, they lose muscle at the same time, and they're losing fat or whatever the hell they're doing there. This is crazy, and he's lifting heavy. How, how does that work exactly? You're trying to get better at lifting, or you're trying to get better at getting ripped? Which one is it, dude? Why many street lifters do pause rips at the top. Of course, they may also do a dead hang in addition to isometrics and sometimes. Nothing here makes sense, but this looks like, it definitely looks like I would spot this one as gym slave. Yes, ma. Double pausing. Overloading the top is incredibly useful for strength development. You could even argue for squeezing the lats, but I'm really doing this to explode and handle heavier weights that I normally cannot do while at the same time minimizing overuse. I'm using the same grip as last week. So I did 155 with 45 chain. That is 200 pounds at the top. That's heavy. You feel your entire body pulling apart. And I promise you, it's going to help. That's heavy. When I remove the chains after. So it looks like my conjugate background is proving to be quite useful on weighted chins. Now the same logic cannot be applied to dips in terms of sticking points, but for that it's about reducing shoulder problems and getting more triceps out of it. But with chin ups, it's a hybrid motion that does develop your top end strength without needing to train isometrics separately. It teaches you how to really horse crack those loads, as Eric Bugenhagen would say. And that is what I'm gonna do when there's a calm day resistance. So that was really heavy, really didn't wanna do any pull-ups after that. So I went down on the floor, hit some spreader pull-downs, but I actually use an underhand grip with it. See, you can rotate in any direction, and this was my first time ever doing this. So it'll be my default moving forward. More biceps, that's what I'm looking for, and the elbows are even more tucked in. Now the only con with the spreader bar is that I can't fully stretch at the top, which is fine for being 100% lap bias, but if I want more overall back, this is where the mag grips come in. So you'll see those next workout. And for rows, I do my signature cable inverter row. Guys, if you like chest supporter rows, you need- Man, these, this looks like the stuff that I'm doing on my channel. I do everything laying down for my back. You've seen me, man. And now Alex is doing it. It's kind of weird. I don't know. It's kind of odd. Need to give these a shot. First of all, the moment you're doing your lap pull downs, all you have to do is lie down and get to work. I do everything for my for my my back, the lats, the back, whatever. I do it laying down. <laughs> Even my arms, I'll lay down and pull it down. Yeah, I'll put it to my forehead. Yeah, a lot a lot of the stuff I do laying down because it's stress free. It's more comfortable, and you get a better stretch, and you get more damage. Yeah. There's no other setup required, so that saves a lot of time. And this is incredibly lower back friendly, and you're pulling in a diagonal angle, similar to a Yates row, but without compromising the range of motion. You can squeeze the lats very hard. It also helps with bench. I wonder who gave him this idea to do this laying down. 
<laughs> Press tightness. So I would say this will reduce shoulder injuries. And because you have two points of contact for stability, you can really grind away. So it's not common to hit failure on rows, especially when they are not length and bias, right? Well, here, you can give it your all without the lower back being a limiting factor. That means that tomorrow I can come in, hit some heavy legs, it won't be a problem. So if these are good enough for me and you don't need that much weight, it'll be around the same as your lap pull down, then these should be good for anyone, especially if you don't care about what others think. I'm not telling you to do this at a commercial gym, although I might. That's how good this exercise is. Now for biceps. Um, I do them in the commercial gym. I wonder who gave him the idea to do these laying down, huh? You've seen me doing it laying down a while ago already. We hit concentration curls. This time, standing up, bending forward a bit, you get a slightly better squeeze. This is kind of a hybrid way between what Arnold used to do and a more modern take because here I have arm support. See, you want bracing for maximum motor unit recruitment. I'm not a fan of having the arm be in and across the body. You can't lift as much weight and it becomes too much shortened, emphasized. Here, it's a good strength curve where the mid-range is still getting some great work in. You can grind the top. And if you want, you can lean back a bit for more stretch, but that's not why I do this. For stretch, I'd rather sit down and have my torso be vertical or even laying back. So the way I'm showing you here is similar to the normal way. There's nothing magical about it. Don't overthink a concentration curl. I beg you, please. Biceps are not a complicated muscle after all, but it is nice knowing that you can exert maximum force. So I like to alternate between the plyometric box and the bent forward version, as well as using an easy bar, arm wrestling style. That's a weird one, which I'll show you soon. Anyway, it doesn't matter which variation you do of concentration curls, just know that it's an excellent preacher curl alternative, and it forces you to be strict. I also like the fact that it's unilateral. Um, yeah, this is not so important, man. <laughs> I don't know why people do this. I guess for fancy, whatever. Maybe they're bored. They need a different variation. I don't know. It's not going to do anything, but whatever. Man, I'm just looking here in his, his uh, little office thingy here. Does he ever do these deadlifts again? Heavy deadlifts anymore? Or those crazy rack pulls and shit, remember? The crazy rack pulls and the deadlifts and all that kind of weird stuff. The Jefferson lifts and all these weird things. Does he ever do them? Does he do them has he stopped doing them or does he ever do them again? Like, I don't know. Does he do them or not? In my case, my left arm is stronger than my... Why did he stop? Right, so I open up with the right. Because when fatigue kicks in, it can allow the stronger arm to match the weaker. So I don't want there to be a great strength discrepancy. So here's the last rep and you'll see what I mean. If I was bending forward the other direction, I wouldn't be able to grind this. But here, I could lean into the curl and there you go. I corrected the joint angle. I could have hit momentary muscular failure. Okay, I, I, I could do this too. Get a light weight and do like uh, shows for everybody on my channel and just talk shit and do a bunch of shows. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good lighting here. Definitely picked great lighting. Make himself look good. Um, lifting like, uh, what is this? 10 pound, 10 pound uh, weights on the bar. Okay. Well, but this is another way to train. For the last biceps exercise, we do classic barbell curls. Straight bar, elbows are tucked in, my body is... Well, then again, he doesn't have to go that heavy. He is getting ripped, right? I couldn't figure out the other ones, that he, why he was going heavy on them, and then this is going... He's going light on it. Just not, nothing here makes sense, but whatever. Look, man, if you're on a low-caloric diet and you're trying to get ripped as fast as possible, uh, I want to lose body fat as fast as possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to lose muscle. You're going to get weaker. I just, I don't understand the whole the whole lifting thing, what he was doing there in the beginning, the lifts with the heavy weight, the chains and all that. Now he's doing like 10-pound 10 10 pound, um, curls. It's just weird, whatever and I'm lowering the bar in front of the body, almost exactly. Of course, you know, you're going to get these minions coming over to my channel complaining about their, you know, their influencer. Ah, you're hating, you're hating on uh, Alpha Desi. I'm absolutely not hating at him at all. I'm simply reviewing the video. I'm just saying what I see. I just, I say what I see. I see what I say. I get it. That's about it, man. You understand me, people? This is for the minions out there. Great. This way I can really feel the biceps on the way down. So not only does this reduce... Yeah, I feel the biceps on the way down. I know a lot of people do it slow for the eccentric movement. You got, well, I'll go, I'll go slow, I'll go, going slow. The thing is, you could go slow, but it'll take you a lot longer. 
I do rapid movements on the eccentric movement to cause as many micro tears to the muscle fibers so I can get an adaptation. <laughs> the whole point is to go rapid, to move rapidly, rapidly through the exercise to get to get the muscle to damage. It doesn't damage so easily, like I said. It makes it really difficult. That's why I moved for higher repetitions. I can get some more micro tears in an adapted state to pull out more adaptations, but I'm conditioning. It's totally different. He's ripping, I'm conditioning. I haven't changed my diet. My diet is exactly the same as it's been the last year. See what I mean? I haven't changed a thing in my diet. And there isn't any like carbs or anything in my diet, but I just haven't changed my diet since since last year, June. I'm on the same diet. The only difference is I'm moving now for higher repetitions. That's about it. I'm not starving myself. I'm conditioning. That's totally different. Conditioning means that the needle on the scale does not move. It stays the same. But the fat to muscle ratio changes. In other words, the muscle should go up slightly and the fat go away. So one gives, one goes higher, one goes lower in this case. In his case, both go lower because he's getting ripped on a low caloric diet, which doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. You also get stronger in conditioning. You actually get stronger. You actually build muscle and lose fat at the same time. It's complicated to explain, but something like that. Building yeah, it's it's relative, depending on the exercises that you're doing, providing you're not adapted to them. But higher repetitions will definitely force the muscle to get these micro injuries. I still have to take time off. I still take a certain amount of time off before I go to the gym and hit it again. But I don't get that many micro tears as I would in a full body exercise as I would do coming in resensitized once a week. It's totally different. It's a totally different regime, exercise regime. Golfer's elbow. I know I keep stressing that in every video, but it's so important, guys, especially when you're curling above 95 pounds. It also gives you the same hypertrophy outcomes. Look at the biceps. Look at the pump. Look at the straining. There is no explosiveness whatsoever. Not even an ounce. Look at the pump. Well, if you're talking about pumps, then that means he's eating carbohydrates. It's associated with sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. You don't get pumps in myofibular hypertrophy if you're on a carnivore diet, a protein diet of cheating everything is tight locked but again you could be eating carbs and getting some adaptations and still getting pumped you could you could i'm not saying at all it'd be like that but again if he's adapted what is he getting just the pump okay in cyborg precision technique these are the exercises that benefit from it when something is restrictive on the joints or you don't want to go super heavy on an isolation movement. Slow down that negative and stop exploding all the time. Now guys are gonna say, well, what about motor unit recruitment? Doesn't going slowly minimize that? Yo, if you hit failure, everything's been properly fatigued. So you need to drop your ego, man, including for curling up. Now there reaches a point where there's so much fatigue buildup that that can cause you to prematurely stop a set. But if it is lasting, let's see. Yeah, but he's not going to get any adaptations here. <laughs> he's adapted to all these movements. He's been doing the pull-ups using his arms. They're already overworked at some point. And there's the protective effect. The RBE steps in. It can even step in in a cycle of you working out. Listen, the repeat about effect could come in and protect muscle from a repeat about of damage. In other words, in the first bout, let's say he did 60 reps in the first bout. He got a huge amount of damage there. Then it protects itself. It hides in type 1 and it doesn't really get damaged anymore. So he's just doing pull-ups for no other reason than, I don't know, a force production. Now, another adaptation takes off force production adaptation, motor unit, and energy receptor. And then... Now he does like what? Curls and stuff? For no other reason, nothing's going on there. There's no adaptations because there's no growth. Hey. There's no damage, there's no growth, okay? 60 to 90 seconds tops, then you <coughs> know it's clean. So although the time of detention is completely irrelevant, that is not a mechanism for hypertrophy, we can compare the time that it takes to do a set slowly versus higher... A mechanism for hypertrophy? What kind? Inflammation? Are you inflaming your muscles now? Is that it? Lifting. Oh, okay. You want to walk around with inflamed muscles and pretend that you look pumped, pumped, and inflamed. That's why you have this nice lighting and you're showing off there with the 10-pound weights or whatever you got here. 10 pound and two and a half. I think there's a two and a half there even on the other side. I can't really tell. It's a small amount of weight. Repetitions. So if you did 10 slow reps, that might be 30 plus with a fast tempo. Who knows? All I could say is that I'm not jerking these barbell curls, and my biceps feel and look amazing. So 
give it a shot. Now here's I'm not wasting my time with like fucking slow repetition weights. Got to go up and down slow. This is ridiculous. Supposing the lean gains are already coming in. Down another pound, pound and a half. You can see the lower back, upper back. Many muscles are coming in. And Many muscles are coming in. He's, he looks okay. He looks all right for a young dude. He's young. He looks okay. Let's see what he looks like when he's old. There's some striations at play. It looks like my back stores the least amount of fat. Vacuum pose. The serratus and the ribs are looking sharp. Both biceps are starting to look separated. Oh. He looks very smooth from the front. No, bi no biceps. He has no biceps. He looks very smooth here in the front. The back, he looks pretty pretty good from the back. Looks like low body fat in the back. That's my, that's my problem. <laughs> I think the back is carrying more body fat. I'm not really sure. It's maybe the shape. I'm not sure. Maybe more body fat in the back. I look better from the front. But my back is suffering, but it's coming in. It's coming in. It'll take a bit, but it'll it'll get there eventually. Anyways, man, tell us think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel. Alex Leonidas, day eight. Yes, uh, two hundred pound chain chin up workout. Day eight of getting ripped. See you in the next one. Ciao, friends.